Welcome back at the Natural History of the Dutch Landscape course. We're going to pick it up in the late Holocene. Uh, that's what we're going to discuss today. We'll see some old dunes, some young dunes, some Hollandveen, and some uh, young marine deposits. Right, this is where we uh, where we left off in our uh, early Holocene uh, lecture. And we've discussed the Nop plus one line, and we've discussed the Han line, Harlem, Utrecht, Nijmegen line. And we've discussed that there are four distinct land, uh, landscape zones in the Netherlands, the clays and the peats and the influence of the land ice in the northwest, the sandy soils, the occasional peats, and lots of influence of the land ice here in the northeast. Then in the southeast, the sandy soils, the occasional peat, and no influence of land ice whatsoever because it didn't get there. And then here, no land ice, but lots of clays and peats and stuff. And this hasn't been mentioned yet. The solid bedrock covered in Lus in the south of the Netherlands. I will make a short video on Southern Limburg later in the course. Um, however, today we're going to just completely ignore Southern Limburg. All right, here we are. This is the situation where we left it in the... Uh, early Holocene, roughly 7,000 years ago, this was the situation. We have the Pleistocene subsurface from before the Ice Ages. We have a push moraine that was there um, through the bulldozing work of the land ice that came this way in the time of the Sala Ice Age. There's a glacial basin over here, same, same difference, push moraine glacial basins, and here there's some boulder loam ice crushing down on the Pleistocene subsurface and everything had been um, eroded and filled up through the sedimentation in the Weichsel Ice Age, land of, lots of cover sands and the boulder loam had been covered by a thick layer of, of sand over here. Then in the early Holocene there was some boreal peat and through transgression old marine deposits were deposited on top of this. This is where your knowledge should be. All right, we've discussed this graph. This is the end of the last glacial. This is the rapid transgression and the rapid temperature rise. All right, and then we have a more or less stable situation. We will be discussing this one and that one and lots of these and some cold, you know, some, some cold spells over here because they are very important for deposition in the west of the Netherlands. You must understand that the Holocene is a period in which transgressions, sea level rise, a sea level stagnation, a stagnation in temperature, and a regression, the opposite of a transgression, so, so sea levels, you know, s s sort of retreat back up into the North Sea basin. Well, all of that stuff uh, that, that's going on in the Holocene, and these two periods of sea level rise, they are especially important for putting down sediment. Here we see the sea level rise as compared to the temperature rise. So rapid in the beginning, this has been covered, this is the early Holocene, and now steady, slowly some sea level rise over here, very important for the west of the Netherlands, then stagnation, more or less stable, then sea level rise again, very important for putting down stuff in the Netherlands, and then it's more or less stable, and now it's rising again, all right, here we go. This is the Netherlands. This is the coastline. We have a lot of sand. We have some plants that grow in that sand, those pioneer vegetations, and they get buried every time the winds howl over the sand, over the dry beach. And these plants, they their uh, roots, they pick up the sand and hold it down, and these big old dunes, they get to grow as a result. In front of those dunes, there is a beach, usually a wet beach and a dry beach. This is the border of the wet beach and the dry beach. This has been discussed extensively in the second year when we were on Terschelling, and we see this a lot. If we draw this in a cross section, it's easy. Here are the dunes. And the dunes, they start to form roughly 5,000 years ago as a result of the sea level that's not rising anymore as fast as it used to, it's stagnating, and in this period of time, the dunes get to form. So there are some dunes over here. 
Now the sea doesn't, you know, come all the way in anymore because the dunes are in the way. Sea level still rising, but it's rising slowly. If the sea levels aren't extremely quickly rising, these dunes get to form and nothing else happens. But, but, so for example, over here, when stuff gets a little faster again, then what happens is that the sea, it starts happening fast and there's a lot of uh, heavy storms and these dunes, they get beat up by the sea. Then what happens is that the sea, it comes all the way over here and some marine deposits get down. So in times when the sea level is rising very, very slowly, other stuff gets to be deposited than the older marine deposits. Guess what that is? It's a marsh. Peat bogs. Here we are. The Holland Veen. Now I've skipped through the this one, this is important actually. This is the North Sea. And the North Sea, this is the dry beach, and then this is the dunes. We've discussed this, and there's some more dunes. And behind the dunes, there is a marsh. It's a big marsh. It, Western the Netherlands was covered in the marsh because the water that falls here, it doesn't get to go to the ocean very quickly because the ocean is rising as well. So these little rivers, they, they don't have a big drop. If they have a big drop, the water is, is um, um, flushed away very quickly. But because of the rise in sea level, the drop becomes ever so slightly less big. And these, this water just doesn't flow as quickly to the ocean. So there's a lot of stagnant water here. A lot of lakes grow as the sea level rises quickly and these lakes they get filled up with peat bogs. So in times of regression and stagnation peat bogs form behind the dunes. Now we refer to these dunes that grew let's say 5,000 years ago there were young dunes but after 2,000 years they are they've become pretty old and the Holland Veen is over here. So the period between 5,000 years ago and 3,000 years ago, we see a first set of old dunes grow as a result of sand blowing in land and, you know, these roots of these plants getting, you know, the, the dunes to keep them, those dunes in place. And behind the dunes, there's a lot of stagnant water and in there, peat grows. Now, there's some erosion going on in the dunes and obviously the sea level starts to rise more quickly again and there are storms and those old dunes they get beat up by the sea and the Holland Veen gets crushed in the same way like the buried or destroyed by the sea boreal peat that we've seen and the sea level rises again because temperatures are going up and young marine deposits get deposited. So now we have a stack of peat, old marine deposits, some old dunes, some Holland Veen and now some young marine deposits in front. Then temperatures stabilize again, sea level either retreats a little bit or becomes more or less stable, and we see new dunes. Here we are. These dunes are referred to as the young dunes. Those are the, these are the dunes that we have today. These still exist. Most of these dunes, we don't see them as much anymore. There, are still, there is still some evidence, and in Egmond we... You can see the young dunes on top of the old dunes and many uh, places in western the Netherlands such as Haarlem or for example Alkmaar they are built on top of the old dunes because they were slightly higher and you could, easy, you, you could work the land more easily because it's sand instead of these young marine deposits, these clays, those Vodensee clays that are very very heavy to lift and they stick together and these young dunes they're sand so it's more permeable the water and you can work the land easier. So young dunes form and what happens if we have young dunes in a water level and um, these water levels aren't rising as quickly anymore we find more peat. Now make no mistakes these peat bogs they used to be huge they used to be eight, eight meters above Anape. alright 
and a pay somewhere over here. This is the one meter plus and a pay line. Everything here is one meter plus, and this used to be eight meters above it. Low in the Netherlands has only become low because we made it so. It used to be eight meters high. Now this is an assignment from your workbook. If you haven't done it yet, I assume that you, or I assume I suggest that you do it now, and um, stop the video and then check your answer. You can also just let the video go and I'll give you the answers, but you won't learn as much. So use your brain first, stop the video, do the exercise, and then come back to the video and press play again. Okay, assuming you pause the video, here are the right answers. First, you must put these in the right order. Now, there's only one, or, one right order, and this is, this is it. Here we have some old dunes, here we have a low sea level, here we have a slightly higher sea level with some old dunes over here. Now, this sea level is what it is today somewhat, and then here are some new dunes. So, this is the right uh, key for the exercise. These are the old dunes. It's this. Harlem is over here, or Alkmaar is over there. Old dunes. Now, there are some young dunes on top of that stuff. It's over here. This is now the Klimdan in school, and this is, uh, I don't know, Zandvoort. And, uh, okay, so that's over there. Blumadal, etc. Now, Boreal Peaks. That stuff has been buried very deeply underground. It's this layer. Now we have the old marine deposits, thick layer, right here. A thick layer right on top. And then we have the Holland Veen. That's over here. All right. This is sort of the quick summary of what you should gather from what I've just shown you. These are the processes that happened in time. So time starts and then this is where we are now. All right, and these are the effects on the Dutch landscape during the Holocene. So the temperature rises, the natural vegetation changes from a tundra into a boreal forest into eventually a deciduous forest in the temperate zone that we have today. The temperature rises cause, if the effect is rapid transgression, Sea level rise. So the sea reclaims the North Sea Basin. The Netherlands becomes smaller. North Sea becomes closer to where it is today. Now the temperature stabilizes and the sea level stabilizes. So dunes form. Then there is a slow sea level rise and peat bogs in areas with stagnant water grow. Then the temperature drops again and we see a regression. Water becomes less dangerous. Temperature rises again and then there is a succession of quick and slow transgressions in which the water becomes very dangerous and we have to worry about drowning. Now being a geologist, I don't like, or I'm not a ge geologist, but if a geologist would look at this, he wouldn't like the, 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 the direction of this arrow. Geologists want to see time in this direction because what's old is buried and what's new is on top. So they want to see it in this position. Time upside down. So temperature rise, rapid transgression, stabilizes, transgression again, etc. And these are the deposits that you should memorize. Just learn it by heart and draw it into your geological maps. Boreal peat comes first. Old marine deposits. Then there is old dunes. Then there is Holland Veen. Then there is uh, young dunes and new layers and young marine deposits and new peats. All right. If I showed you the map of the Netherlands, okay, then this is the right order and succession. Pleistocene subsurface with glacial forms over here and no glacial forms over there. Sands uh, and cover sands mostly. Maybe some peat, but over here and over there, but nothing much. Then the west of the Netherlands gets buried in boreal peat. Then that stuff gets washed away and replaced by old maritime deposits. Then old dunes. Then the Holland Veen. Then the young marine deposits. Then the young dunes. And this is how it is now. Okay, this is the stack. 
If you start drilling here, you would expect to find new peat bogs, young marine deposits, Holland Veen, old marine deposits, buried or destroyed by the sea, boreal uh, peat, and then finally you would end up in the Pleistocene subsurface that's over here. On the surface over here is buried deep in the ground. This is the situation roughly 700 years ago. The Holland Veen gets washed away, buried, young dunes form, and new peatlands form. Okay, this is what it looked like if I were to open my window where I live today in Enkhuizen. I would look out and I would see this in 700 BP. A lot of stagnant water with peat bogs everywhere. Maybe one or two of these swamp forests around. Okay, I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't recognize it. I would not not be able to say this is Enkhuizen. This is, this is what it looks like today. Okay, this is an exercise just for your um, for your own good. Stop the video after I explain what you were supposed to do. Okay, these are the geofactors that shape eventually the landscape. This is what we discussed in, in um, lecture number two. What I want you to do is fill in the right words for all of the geofactors. What was the soil 700 years BP? What was the flora 700 years BP? What was the climate 700 years BP? How, how big was the influence of man 700 years? What was the relief? What was the rock? What was, what was going on with the water? Etc. 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 So have a look at peat bogs and swamps for the west of the Netherlands and these swamp forests and try to fill this in. All right, we're back. I assume that you paused the video when you filled in all of the right words. Here are, here are the ones that I filled in. There weren't so many people around 700 years ago in those swamps because it's barely habitable and people can't work the land because there's far too much water going on. Uh, the water can't go anywhere and even though there is a temperate climate and there is stable CO2, all this excess water, it leads to swamp forests and it leads to peat and there's some clay underneath in some cases but most of that stuff, most of the most important factor here is the water because it leads to a, to a forest and the forest attracts, you know, all kinds of birds like ducks and geese and all, the, all those, those animals and the forest critters that we saw in the video in last, uh, the, the last lecture, lecture before here. And people do not live here yet. We'll get there, trust me. Um, and... When it comes to the substrate, substrate, like where's the rock? Well, it's buried deep under thick layers of unconsolidated material like sands and clays and peats and dunes and stuff. And when it comes to relief, there is some difference between the dunes where we have relief, like 50 meters up and down, give or take, and the flats where we live, um, which is basically just the North Sea Basin that hasn't been claimed by the sea dot, 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 yet. The west of the Netherlands, or maybe even the east of the Netherlands as well, if we keep on pumping CO2 in, CO2 in the atmosphere, you know, might even be claimed in the next transgression of seawater. So, all the way, the Western Europe is all the same basin. It's the North Sea Basin, and the Netherlands is just part of that, except maybe from southern Limburg, which is why I'm going to make a separate video on that later.